So, Mary, I know that you have uh, always followed Helen's career and you took a lot of inspiration from what she's done in the past and you've ended up competing with her too. What's that like? How does that feel to compete against somebody who's inspired you? Um, it was really amazing. So when I first started and I met Helen in 2008 at the Junior International, we were both grade threes. And then obviously over time, our conditions have both deteriorated and I was reclassified to a one and Helen was. And so that so we've competed together as a grade three and then as a grade one in 2016. But Helen's always been really supportive um, because at the time I didn't know my condition was going to get worse. So she's always been there to ask questions and also in riding because now we only do walk only tests. Um, but it was pretty amazing to be competing with her. And Helen, much as you could be a buddy to Mary, when you're up in that horse and you want to win, you want to win. No more mispoliteness, I guess, eh? I guess so, but I think... You, you don't really focus on that because you're focused on the horse and you're focused on getting the best performance out of the horse that you're on. And really the other competitors kind of are, are on the sidelines if, if you want when you're riding. And you don't really think about them. You only think about yourself and just being able to produce the best test that you can do. And, and we saw you in person, Helen, at the conference in Manchester and you brought along your medals and we, we, we chatted and we, we know that you have, um, you're living with Friedrich's attacks here. Uh, Mary, on the other hand, you, you spoke about it works for me at the conference uh, last year. Do you want to specify the kind of attacks here that you have? Uh, it's, it's more like um, cerebellar attacks, yeah. And what difference does it make to you when you look back on your life and finding out about having cerebellar attacks? What difference has it made to you as a person in terms of your outlook on life? Obviously, it makes a difference to, you know, it, it can restrict you in certain ways. But in terms of you as a person, when you look back, what kind of person has it made you? Um, I think it's made me much more positive and I basically live every day to the fullest that I can and I've had a lot of opportunities created to me as having ataxia which I maybe wouldn't have had before so it's opened avenues for me and even though it's really tough like the horses are the reason that I do everything and that's as a result of the ataxia that I'm able to do power dressage. And what about you, Helen? How would you say that uh, having Friedrich's attacks here has affected you as a person, you internally? Well, I would really echo what Mary said. It's definitely the big positive is the horses. There is just no way I'd be have the opportunity to ride every day without it. As a person, I think Friedrich's has really opened my eyes and really made me have to think outside the box um, because new obstacles are being constantly thrown at you you have to kind of keep adapting and it's made like my mom would say I'm probably strategic enough um, and I, I think that it's probably that that to me is a great strength uh, having that because I'm quite good at maybe analyzing what hasn't gone right, whether it be on the horse or just here in the house trying to find a new way to stand up and do something. Uh, definitely, I've had to just be good at analyzing what I do and how I can do it better. The great thing about horses, of course, Mary, is they don't ask questions. They don't care who you are. They either have a rapport with you or they don't. And, and I know from reading a little bit about you that, in fact, you found that it, it saved your mental health, if nothing else, because it took you away from the bullying you had at school. It gave you a positive reason for ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was bullied quite badly at school because I was different to the other children and I could never do PE, but I could go home and get on a horse and just get away from it all. 
and they are my best friends and it, like as Helen will say they don't judge you it doesn't matter if your legs don't work they just do I use my voice in my seat and yeah <laughs> and what difference does it make to you in terms of the community the horsey community uh, for making new friends ones that you didn't have at school yeah so I've made some amazing friends through the power world um obviously a lot of them are international so I talk to them on Facebook and stuff but we all have really similar disabilities and things that we come across and so it's really good to be able to talk about similar things and of course the horses. Do, do you need to be competitive Helen to get the most out of what you're doing um, you know riding the horse because not everyone can be a Paralympian is it enough just to enjoy it or do you have to have that competitive edge? Um, I guess in, in most things, I maybe have the competitive edge, but uh, as in I love analyzing what I've done and, and trying to do better. Even I cycle a little bit of recumbent trike and I'm out by myself, I'm not in any races, but I do like to track my performance and, and uh, try and uh, get the most out of it and judge how windy it's been versus how windy it was a different day and try and figure out what's slowing me down. But I don't think you necessarily need to be competitive to do the horses. I even just love getting out in the air and doing and being with them and doing different things. Uh, I was actually asked the question there lately, what would, it, what would I really like to do if it wasn't for the ataxia? Or, you know, just if the ataxia was gone, what would I like to do? And in the split second, I would say, actually, one of the things I would love to be able to do a bit better is just groom the horses and that's nothing to do with anyone else that's not known to be there with you I would just I'd like to be able to do that sort of thing so I do love being competitive but I equally love just being outside and being with the horses yeah and what's coming across from both of you I think Mary is that neither one of you since your diagnosis has just gone, oh, boo-hoo, poor me, and retreated within yourself. You've both seen it as something that's opened up new fields. But you must have your darker moments. Do the horses take you out of your darker moments? Yeah, so I've... Obviously, they have to be fed and stuff. So I've always thought if I laid around in bed and didn't get up, then they wouldn't get fed and they'd be a bit cross. And obviously, like Helen said, the time spending with them on the days that I can't ride because it's just too much to get out, like up into the saddle, I can still spend time with them in my wheelchair and do stuff. But I do still have like darker days. It is really hard, but I always try and look forward and like look to what I'm going to do with the horses. And then that kind of brings me back down to planet Earth. <laughs> and same with you, Helen. Yeah, I definitely echo it. The horses have really helped me. Um, I was diagnosed when I was 12 or 13. And at that time, uh, my mom went and got me a pony. And I was actually extremely fortunate. And at that time, for the first number of years, it was nothing to do with me being physically active. It just really helped me mentally because I had a different reason to set the alarm clock, get up out of bed and go and do something. And fair enough, I can't always do what I want, but it just giving me that reason to have to get out and do something made such a difference. Well, you are the, um, the older one of the two here. Um, you are the medal winning Paralympian. Uh, of course, Mary, you have your medal from the 2019 European Championships. I'm guessing, though, that neither one of you is done with this. And so let me ask you, Helen, as the older, more experienced rider here, to give some tips to Mary for the future in terms of her riding and, and where she's headed. 
God, that's really <laughs> difficult. Um, I, I think focus is the main one to, and not necessarily on the competitions and stuff. It's just, I mean, focus on at home and uh, what you think you can do to make things better because at the level Mary's at, it's only the small little tweaks that are needed now. She, she has a really great feel for it and she has some great experience behind her and it's the small little things that will hopefully tip her over, over the edge and get her to where she wants to go. And where do you want to go to, Mary? Hopefully the World Championships next year um, and ultimately Paris. That would be amazing. <laughs> well, why not? Why shouldn't you? Listen, the two of you, it's been great um, talking to you. And I know how inspirational you both are to many people who are watching this. Thank you for taking the time to chat to us here at the conference. And I wish you both the very best of luck. And hopefully we'll see you face to face at the future conference. Helen and Mary, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.